So hello and welcome, Micropunter here again and uh, today in this video, uh, yeah, some thoughts about microscopy and uh, children and uh, I'd like uh, to start off uh, with a little story, something that happened a few weeks ago and uh, I think uh, it was uh, quite, uh, yeah, it was a learning experience for me, let's put it this way. Well, a few weeks ago, my six-year-old nephew and my sister-in-law visited me and uh, visited our family. And of course, uh, the six-year-old boy, my six-year-old nephew also wanted to have a look uh, through the microscope and I offered, um, to, uh, I offered to him that he can have a look at a few of my microscope slides. Of course, uh, six-year-old boys, uh, they're all very interested and also my sister-in-law was very interested and of course I took out my slide box and uh, I showed them a few slides. I uh, have a slide box with 50 slides and yeah a nice little assortment here cross-section of plant and animal tissues and also some whole mounts of insects yeah and I showed them um, a few and of course uh, yeah they had a possibility to look to look through directly through the microscope but of course also had a little monitor uh, next to it so we could actually watch the things uh, together on the screen as well and then all of a sudden my sister-in-law made a very hmm, interesting comment one that uh, yeah got me thinking she said the following well but actually all of those slides they all look the same this is excuse me what do you mean they look the same yeah they they, they all look the same and I said, no, no, they, they don't look the same. I and mean, look at this one over here. That's the cross section of a plant, a plant stem. And this one over here is an animal tissue. Uh, they won't look the same. They are very different. And look over here in the plant cross section, you can see the xylem, which transport water, transports water up the stem and the phloem, which transports the nutrients um, uh, down the stem. And it's called the vascular bundle. And, 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 and do you see already the problem here? I started explaining the things because otherwise they wouldn't have understood the things that they see. And I think that's a problem. As soon as you start explaining things, um, then I think there is always a little bit the danger that people start to lose interest. And the six-year-old boy, of course, he wanted to see movement. He wanted to see little critters, little animals. But what did I do? I showed him yeah, cross sections of histological, yeah, histological cross sections, which are quite interesting for me, um, people who want to study biology, but certainly not suitable for six year old children. And also my sister in law um, basically com commented, well, they all look the same. And uh, I actually spent a little bit of time thinking about this. What did she mean actually when I said they look the same? And then I realized one thing, yeah, of course, um, they look the same because these are all two dimensional microtome cross sections. And uh, for a person who does not know much about biology, of course it must look the same. Um, for example, one of the slides was the eye of a cat. It sounds very interesting, really. Um, but what did you see? You saw the different cell layers of the eye. It didn't look like an eye at all. It was very abstract. Yeah. Um, um, or certain plant cross sections. They didn't look really like like plants, like you expect them to look like. But these were abstract patterns. And uh, for this reason, people who are not really uh, trained in biology, they have, of course, a problem uh, making sense of the things uh, that they see. And this can cause some of the people maybe to lose interest uh, because then you have to start explaining and then, yeah, you kind of, you know, yeah, there's the danger that they lose interest. And so for this reason, I recommend, and uh, I have actually done this later on, if you want to show a children or beginners something under the microscope, do not show them, um, yeah, a readily prepared permanent slides, which are, yeah, professionally prepared for sure, but there is no movement and, uh, yeah, there is no action going on. Um, and for this reason, I've, the next time when he visited, I showed them, of course, water samples and then their ciliates are moving around cells that are dividing maybe. Um, and there's movement, there's something going on, little nematode worms. And uh, then people can identify more with those things than with abstract, uh, um, abstract histological sections or, you know, that you can commonly, which are commonly used also by med students who study medicine. They have to study these things or people who are, stud bo who are studying plants, botany. Of course, you have to know it um, in this case. But for people who do not have this biological background, I think indeed um, that those uh, slides can be a little bit yeah, 
difficult to understand. Let's put it this way. And for this reason, I um, definitely recommend if you buy a microscope to a child, of course, you want to include a slide box because at Christmas time or at birthday, if it's a birthday, if it's a birthday present, the children they immediately want to look at something and there is not, not enough time um, or maybe not even enough know-how uh, to actually now prepare slides with something interesting to look at. And of course, for this reason, you should definitely include um, some microscope slides. But at the same time, you have to take it also a step further and um, you have to also encourage the children and also maybe to look at other things and do a little bit of nature exploration together with them because in many cases the children themselves don't know enough um, to prepare their own slides. This is also one of the reasons why I'm making these videos here and also the live stream if you some of you might have already watched it is to encourage people who do not have a lot of um, biological training or background uh, to enjoy microscopy and to do a little bit of a nature exploration without getting too scientifically involved. Yeah, so this is basically something that I would like uh, to share with you. And it was certainly also a learning experience for me and also a little bit of an, of an experience in the sense that I did, yeah, start, all of a sudden started to realize how outsiders, how um, people who do not have a scientific background, how they might actually look um, at the specimens. Yeah, and for them, many of these things simply don't make um, a lot of sense. And as a last comment, and if you want to buy a microscope for a child, especially for a very young child, let's say, yeah, five, six years and older, I think uh, below six years, it might not make a lot of sense all the time because the kids don't have the manual the dexterity yet uh, to operate a microscope. Maybe for the younger ones, you want to buy a magnifying glass. Um, but if you want to buy a microscope for young children, then do consider buying stereo microscopes because those stereo microscopes um, allow you to do very uncomplicated nature observations. You just take the specimen as it is, put it directly under the microscope and you can look at it and you get an upright image and a stereoscopic image and it's much more immersive and uh, I think it connects the children much better to their environment this way than if you just are giving them relatively abstract uh, microscope slides. But uh, yeah, of course, um, if you know a little bit more, maybe those compound microscopes here that do require microscope slides for older children um, might give a little bit more um, yeah, possibilities to experiment around with. Yeah, so just uh, uh, yeah, some, some ideas here, my opinion, my experience, and uh, maybe you also would like to share your opinions. There is, of course, a comments uh, section below. And uh, as I mentioned before, do join the live stream uh, once a week. Um, yeah, see you then again. Happy microbe hunting as always and uh, bye bye. All the best.